that, you know, we've added on a whole bunch of new graphics technologies to that as well. Um, you know, we've done things like, um, you know, we, we, we've done a lot to try to help you enjoy and experience um, high-fidelity high gaming, right? I mean, for, everyone knows 4K gaming, right? Everyone's heard of 4K, you know it looks great, but not everyone has a 4K monitor. In fact, most people don't. Most people have like a 1080p monitor. And so one of the things that we've done with Maxwell is develop a technology called Dynamic Super Resolution. And what that does is allows you to enjoy, you know, you have this, you have this Maxwell, you got the fastest graphics card in the world. You probably would like to enjoy, you know, some high fidelity gaming with it, right? And so even if you have a 1080p monitor now, what we can do is um, render games out at high fidelity and at, at 4K. And then we've developed a, um, uh, uh, an image processing technology to go and take that 4K image that we render out and uh, you know adapt it to a 1080p display. And so now, even though you have a 1080p display, the images you see are closer to 4K quality. And you do all that without even having to upgrade your monitor, right? So that's one of the great things. That's one of the things we're really excited about with, with Maxwell. And um, another one is a technology we call MFAA. MFA is a new anti-aliasing technology, but ultimately what we're trying to do with MFA is increase your performance, right? So you have, on, kind of on the one hand, you may, you, may have, you may be playing a game, maybe League of Legends, Dark Souls 2, right, where you're, you're already getting great frame rates and you just really want to increase your image quality. That's what DSR does, right? But on the other hand, maybe you have a 4K display and you're playing a more, um, you know, a, a more complex game like BF4 or Crisis 3, you know, something like that where you just, you need more frame rate, right? And so of course a new generation of GPU gets you more frame rate, but on top of that we developed MFAA, which is a new anti-aliasing technology, which essentially um, doubles your AA at um, nearly zero performance cost, right? So you can play your game with 4X AA image quality at a performance cost of 2X AA. And so now if you've got a high resolution monitor, you're playing the toughest games out there, you get you know, not only the performance boost of Maxwell, but you get another like 30% on top of that with the new AA technology. So, you know, it's a lot towards, um, that, that all is focused on being able to provide like this high fidelity gaming experience, right? And so then on top of that, you know, one of the, one of the core aspects as we architected Maxwell um, was to be able to generate a step forward in, in lighting technology and the way you light games. And really, you know, lighting is a, uh, I think a lot of people don't really realize how big a deal it is, how big a deal lighting is. I mean, our, our the human visual system takes so many cues from lighting and shading and shadows that if you don't light a scene right, it's, it's not gonna look right. It's just not gonna look real without the correct lighting. And it's actually, when you think about lighting in general, fundamentally, it's a very, very difficult challenge. You know, what, what, is, what is truly going on around us is there's, you know, bazillions of rays of light bouncing off, you know, an infinite number of points and then bouncing off one surface and another surface and another surface and eventually making dry. And, and you know, trying to simulate all of that stuff um, is which is, is so computationally intensive. It can be done through techniques like, like ray tracing, but for example, in order to ray trace a scene, you need a supercomputer to actually calculate all that. And in fact, we, you know, dur during the presentation here, Jensen showed this um, ray traced image of a room. And that ray traced image that he showed took three seconds to generate with 1,500 GPUs. So obviously you can't do that in real time in your games. Might be a little so, difficult. <laughs> so what we had to do is, you know, we had to develop a new technology, um, which we call VXGI, which approximates that, but can do it in a way that, that um, can be done in real time. And so you can actually simulate or approximate, you know, real time global illumination. And you can approximate how light bounces off of objects, how it reflects off of objects, how secondary bounces of light, um, you know, light and, 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 um, and shade scenes. And so we developed this new technology. It's actually a new GameWorks module um, that, that we're working on. You know, we're, we're uh, developing for UE4. We're developing for some of the major game engines. It's going to be available to developers later this year. Um, and it utilizes this new technology that we put into Maxwell to accelerate it. And so, you know, this technology is going to be able to run in real time on, on our Maxwell GPUs. Um, and it, it just, it really is going to add a whole new level of realism to games. And, you know, then the, the, the last big thing that we've been working on a lot is, uh, is virtual reality. You know, obviously virtual reality is one of these things that is just a whole new way to experience gaming. And 
It's one of these things where like, if you do it right, it looks amazing. If you do it not right, it's a little stomach churning, right? And the, the problem there is that because, you know, when you move your head, if the image in front of your face is not moving with you, yeah. with you then your eyes and your and your you know inner ear are telling your brain different things, and your brain just kind of rebels, yeah, yeah. and you get this like weird vertigo thing. So you really don't want that. Yeah. And so the key, you know, a real key to virtual reality is being able to do it with high performance and low latency, right? Because that's what will make sure that that image, first of all, is being refreshed quickly enough, but second of all, is not lagging behind your head movements. And so we developed a bunch of technology. It's, uh, it's called VR Direct, which really gives you more direct access into your into your um, into your VR module. But ultimately what it does is it increases performance. You know, we're enabling things like SLI for virtual reality um, and decreases latency. And in fact, we have, through uh, performance improvements and you know various technologies to reduce latency, we can reduce the latency pipeline on virtual reality by a half. Now, and I see the Oculus setup. Yeah. With uh, you know, four or five got, stations here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're, and we're, we're gonna be, I'm gonna check it out. You better. <laughs> So that part again, that partnership with Oculus, yeah, is that something again that you guys are going to go forward? You're going to de develop it more? Um, yeah, I mean we're we're doing we are we're developing vir for virtual reality in general. Okay, in general, right? Yeah, and sure. Oculus, of course, is a their their major player yeah. in that industry. They got a lot of you know great momentum going. They got some nice um, you know some very nice hardware, right. and so of course we're working with them. But we you know the 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 concept of virtual reality it. it when it's done right, it is such an immersive experience that, um, you know, I think it's something that we we really want to we want to push the industry forward, right? And we want to be able to power that in a in a great way. So, um, yeah, the partnership with them has been great, and, and you know, a lot of these technologies can be used for virtual reality in general.